Welcome to Six Mile Creek. We're right here in the city of Ithaca, and there's so many interesting things to see. In fact, one of the most unusual rocks in town is this one that I'm sitting on right here. So let's take a walk, and I'll tell you all about it. Ithaca is gorgeous. Have you ever wondered why? Three geologic elements work in different combinations to create our iconic landscape. First, we have ancient horizontal layers of sedimentary rock. Vertical fractures shake things up a bit and modify the bedrock. And erosion by water and glacial ice exposes the underlying geology. Six Mile Creek flows into Cayuga Lake from the southeast through the city of Ithaca. The city gets its drinking water from Six Mile Creek, so the creek and its gorges include a series of dams and reservoirs, as well as some really great hiking trails and unique local geology. The creek carves a valley through the local bedrock. These layers are sandstones and shales formed from sand and mud deposited on the bottom of the ocean about 380 million years ago during the Devonian period. How do we know this was an ancient seafloor? The rocks contain abundant marine fossils, organisms that we know lived in warm, shallow seawater because their descendants still live in those conditions today. Brachiopods are marine animals with two shells, kind of like clams, and they're some of the most common fossils that we find preserved in our bedrock. The other thing that's really neat, if you look around in the rocks that are lying here in the creek bed, and if you pick up a piece that's our local bedrock, you might find some that have fossils in them. The fossils were living on the floor of the Devonian Ocean. When they died, they were covered with sediment, and then they've been re-exposed by later erosion, and that's how we can find them. Here, I'll show you this one. So these brachiopods are actually telling us something really important. If these sediments accumulated in the ocean almost 400 million years ago, and Ithaca is nowhere near the ocean now, then the geography of the ancient world must have been really different back then. The conclusions that we can draw from our observations of the geologic record allow us to reconstruct Earth's geography through time and its different environments and their inhabitants. Geological research done up and down the Appalachian Mountains tells us that during the Devonian period, Ithaca was located on the west coast of a continent we call Avalonia and at the bottom of a warm, shallow sea. And in fact, Ithaca was in the southern hemisphere at that time, and the North American continent has moved thousands of miles northward since then. So when you walk through a landscape like this one, there's much more to see than what meets the eye. You can see both what's here now and what used to be here 380 million years ago. A lot can happen in 380 million years. Are there other geologic features along Six Mile Creek that tell us about some of the intervening years? You should know I wouldn't ask if the answer was no. Clearly, there was some process that caused the Devonian Ocean to recede and leave this landscape high and dry. Other paleogeographic evidence from around the world shows us that after these sediments were deposited, the North and South American continents collided with Europe and Africa, creating a single supercontinent that we've named Pangaea. When continents collide, a lot of damage is done to the bedrock. It gets uplifted, often tilted and deformed, and pervasively fractured. Those fractures are an important part of the formation of the gorge here at Six Mile Creek, and one of the reasons that Ithaca is gorgeous. Here you can see the fractures, features called joints, and how there are actually several sets of parallel joints. Some run roughly east-west, others north-south. Clearly, Six Mile Creek has taken advantage of these planes of weakness as it erodes its modern channel. The joints are the reason that some parts of our gorges are narrow and deep with nearly vertical walls. Other geologic processes take advantage of the joints as well. During the Cretaceous period, around 140 million years ago, molten magma welled up from deep beneath Ithaca, following the joints toward the surface. The magma cooled to form an igneous rock called kimberlite and is now visible filling some of our local joints. So you notice how this rock looks really different from everything else around? 
It's actually an igneous rock. It's not like the sedimentary rocks that make up the rest of this gorge. And you can see how very different it is when you look at the contact where it touches the rest of the rocks. And also the fact that it stands up vertically, unlike everything else, which is flat and horizontal. So one of the things that you can see is different. Not only is this rock different color, but it's also got pieces of the surrounding rock in it. If you look at a piece that I picked up nearby for comparison, you can see these are the same thing. So how does that happen? This igneous rock is molten down very deep in the earth, maybe 100 miles deep. And it's moving up towards the surface pretty rapidly, rapidly enough that it can rip off pieces of uh, this local bedrock from the side of the, of the conduit as it's moving up towards the surface. And then when it cools, those pieces remain incorporated in this rock. These are called xenoliths because they're different from the rock that they're found in. The other thing that's different is that you can see that there are some sparkly crystals in this rock. And these are minerals like micas that we don't normally find in the sandstone and shale that makes up the bedrock in the Finger Lakes. These are igneous minerals. They form from a cooling magma. Both the crystals and the xenoliths give the kimberlite a very different texture than the surrounding bedrock, one that's characteristic of volcanic igneous rocks. So what's this kimberlite doing here in Six Mile Creek? These are very unusual rocks, although there is a cluster of related kimberlites here in central New York. The name kimberlite comes from Kimberley, South Africa, where the kimberlite magmas contain diamonds. The diamonds and other fragments, along with the overall chemistry of the rock, indicate a very deep origin for the magma. And no, sadly, our kimberlites don't contain diamonds. At the time that these magmas erupted in the early Cretaceous period, the supercontinent Pangaea had split apart and the Atlantic Ocean was growing wider. Deep within the Earth, an anomalously hot spot within the mantle generated magma that erupted at the surface as the tectonic plates passed over. A chain of volcanic eruptions tracks the movement of the North American plate over the hot spot, extending from northern Canada through the Finger Lakes and out across the floor of the Atlantic Ocean. While kimberlites are unusual, we've got some other interesting rocks in our gorges that are much easier to spot. Walking along the path or in the creek, you might see some big round boulders that aren't kimberlites but also don't look like the bedrock that forms the gorges. While the rocks themselves are millions of years old, they've arrived here in the creek much more recently. So rocks like this, these flat sedimentary rocks that are very fine-grained and gray, this is our bedrock. These are sandstones and shales that formed on the floor of the Devonian Ocean. And this is what we see almost everywhere we look, in the walls of the gorge, all around the Finger Lakes region. But you'll notice, if you look carefully, and particularly maybe on the forest floor or here in the stream bed, that we've also got a bunch of rocks that are not flat and gray. They're rounded, and they can have a whole bunch of other colors, pink, white, um, sparkly. And these are not from here. These are called glacial erratics. They were picked up by the ice sheets that moved across this part of the world tens of thousands of years ago. And when the ice melted, these rocks fell out and landed here. That's why we call them erratics, because they're not from here. And we can look at the minerals that are in these rocks, and we can figure out where they came from. A lot of these erratics are from the Adirondack region to the north of us. Um, some of them are from as far away as Canada, which is actually really cool. And so you'll find these when you look for the round rocks that don't come from here that look like they're out of place. The advancing ice sheets that scoured up rocks and carried them south also modified the landscape. The valleys of the Finger Lakes are so deeply scoured that the lake bottoms are below sea level. 
Streams like Six Mile Creek that flow into these deep valleys rapidly erode the bedrock. With the help of the vertical joints, the streams create narrow, steep-sided gorges. Walking along Six Mile Creek gives us a really intriguing look into the geologic past of the Finger Lakes region. We observe the evidence for ancient oceans and the creatures that live there. We see the effect of plate tectonic collisions that uplifted our landscape above sea level. We've even got volcanic rocks in the creek bed. And all of this is visible to us today because glaciation modified our landscape and allowed running water to carve our gorges. And best of all, this amazing geologic history is visible right downtown in the city of Ithaca. So take a walk in Six Mile Creek to see for yourself why Ithaca is gorgeous. <laughs>